and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to have a look at getting and saving player progress. Now, I have covered this in a previous tutorial. You might have seen the one where I was on an icy mountain pass and uh, I was saving which checkpoint I'd got to and then loading back in uh, at that appropriate checkpoint the next time I went into the game. So that's still a relevant tutorial um, for player progress, but I thought it would be worth me revisiting this subject to look at a couple of different additions that I'd like to add to that tutorial. Firstly, I'd like to look at a different use case. So in this tutorial, I am gonna be focusing on RPG style elements. So adding player attributes that can increase or decrease uh, and then saving those attributes. I also wanted to make sure that we look at how we incorporate our save functionality within the auto save feature that is already there in the adventure uh, blueprint. So if you go in the adventure blueprint and you go to the user template, you can see this auto save script folder. So that's automatically saving the user inventory every 60 seconds. Uh, actually it's saving it every 10 seconds. So yeah, you can set the interval how quickly it saves and loads it. So I wanted to look at using the auto save func uh, feature player attributes um, and also uh, because if we look at the documentation for the creator API which is at api.creator.com I'm in the script uh, section of the API documentation and we can see that the get saved data which is this line here has this deprecated in the final column and what deprecated means is essentially uh, this function will still work but there is a better way of doing it now and it, this function may not be maintained in the future. It might be removed from the API. So what we're going to do is look at how we use this new way, this get save data way of getting the data. You'll notice the key difference is this one has a callback. This one does not. And the reason for that is this original way of doing it essentially did it asynchronously. So it went and got hold of the data and it could do that in the background while you continued with other um, script in your game. Uh, and when it got that data, it would run some functionality. The new way essentially runs synchronously. So it will immediately go and fetch uh, whatever save data it is uh, and come back. And then the next line of code underneath that one, you know that it has got hold of uh, the save data if there was any. Okay, so that's, that's, my, that's my several reasons for uh, undertaking another um, save and load uh, player data or player progress tutorial. Now that we have that, uh, have talked about that, let's look at how we actually incorporate it. So in this game so far, I am using an adventure blueprint and I am in advanced mode. I'm in advanced mode because I'm going to do some scripting. And this is primarily a scripting tutorial. So if you, um, if you want to follow along, then you will need to uh, make sure that you have access to advanced mode and be in an adventure blueprint. I have two entities in my game. There's this altar over here and this anvil over here. And what these do is when the player interacts with them, they get some additions to their attributes. Let's have a look at it in practice. So I'm testing the game. If I run over to this altar and press interact, get some shiny effects but also if I open the console we can see that my magic is going up player has two magic three magic four magic five magic and so on so whenever I um, interact with it my magic goes up if I go over to this anvil um, I interact with this and it increases my strength so pretty basic uh, I'm keeping this as simple as possible so that when it comes to looking at the code uh, it's not cluttered with other things that might be going on so we have magic and we have strength and we can just increase those two attributes. Let's look at how it does that. So essentially attached to my user, I have a character attributes script folder. Uh, and within there is one script. It has a few different attributes set as properties, an add strength and an add magic function. To add strength, you call this function and pass in however much strength you want to add. To add magic, you call this function and the same sort of thing. So when my player interacts with the anvil, for example, so the anvil in the game, I have the improve attribute script that I've written and essentially that just calls the add strength function. So when you interact with the anvil, it runs this function. 
and that calls this add strength function on my character. Now at the moment, when I go back in the game, you'll see that if I run back over here to the anvil, I'm again starting from the beginning. I've started from one strength and it's increasing from one. So at the moment, it's not saving. And let's look at how we can save our character attributes now that we know that how they're incrementing. So firstly, I'm going to go to my user and in here, I'm going to highlight that we're using the auto save script. So this auto save script comes bundled in the adventure um, blueprint and it's super handy because it has an interval of however long, like every 10 seconds and every 10 seconds, it will essentially go and save uh, whatever you ask it to. It does that by calling an on save event and that then essentially feeds out to whatever script you want. So this script, all it's doing is repeatedly every 10 seconds firing this event. The real magic happens here in this inventory save script. Uh, and at the moment it's just saving the inventory. So it's an inventory save script and it's running this on save function to save the player's inventory. So that happens every 10 seconds at the moment. So whenever this interval passes, the other thing that this uh, auto save script does is an on load event. So this is tied into, if we go to the adventure script, when a player logs in for the first time, it gets hold of the user, which represents the player, um, it represents the person playing the game. And it essentially runs the auto save script on their user template. It runs the load function. So what that is doing, if we go back to our user, is firing this on load event. And the on load event is calling a function in inventory save script, and it's calling the on load function. So essentially user logs in, asks auto save to go and do whatever it needs to do to load some data in. Auto save fires uh, an on load event, which is hooked up at the moment to the inventory save scripts on load function. We're going to add a new script which is going to be very similar to the inventory save script, but it's going to be only focusing on player attributes. So let's do that. With my auto save script folder selected, I'm going to click entity add script, new script, and this is going to be called attributes save script. Let's go in here and let's fill out our functions. We need two functions, just like the inventory save script have has. The first one is Oh, I've spelled attributes wrong. We'll go with attributes. <laughs> uh, we'll go with attributes for now. Uh, on save. And we need a save version. And we need our attribute save script on load. And we need, for the on load, we need a callback and a save version. Now, this is a different callback to the one um, I mentioned in the API because this callback is required by the auto save script. If we look at where it does the load, it's asking us to, yeah, here, run the load uh, event, pass in a callback and pass in a save version. Now, if I was to hook this up, so let's do that, hook up the, uh, hook up the attribute save script to the on load function. Let's run the on load function in that on load event there. And the same again here. So uh, add a new binding, drag in the auto save um, script folder, click on the attribute save script and click on on save. So I've just, I've just written some empty functions like this. And I've said, all right, hook those functions up to these two events. So when this event fires, it runs the onload function. And when this event fires, the on save event fires, it runs the on save function. Just like what happens in the inventory save script. Let's now test and run that. Ah, okay. So it does it's broken our game completely. And the reason for that is it needs it needs us to call this callback. Otherwise, it's not going to spawn the player. So let's call the callback now. Uh, and if we remember that was hooked up to the adventure script. Um, so now when the user logs in, it does 
it goes and gets hold of all the data associated with that user and then it runs this callback function which allows the player to spawn in. Uh, if I interact with these things, it still isn't saving anything, but notice that the game is no longer broken. So it's not doing anything, but it's not broken. It's a great place to be. <laughs> okay, let's look now at saving and loading these attributes. So to save the attributes, uh, firstly, let's get hold of the um, all of the trip attributes we might have. So let's put the attributes here and self get entity so get hold of the user entity remember we're in the context of this user here so now we've got hold of the user and we want the character attribute script so dot character attributes script and i'm actually just going to get the properties of that so the character attributes properties here and i'm storing those properties in a local variable called attributes now we're going to create a local variable called save data. And this is what we're going to store the data we're going to save in. Uh, we're going to save magic. And that's going to be equal to attributes.magic. We're going to save strength, which is going to be equal to attributes.strength. We're going to save the element, which is equal to attributes.element. And I'm just getting these, by the way, I'm just getting these from these three properties here. So that's those three properties there, magic, strength, and element. And I need one more property, which is version. And this is really important because I might update my game in the future and have a different version model. So version equals save version. And that's the wrong type of bracket. I need a parentheses. So open parentheses. We've written out a Lua table here uh, with magic, strength, element, and version and that's our save data and now we're going to go ahead and do self set save data and we're going to save that table like that so <clears throat> that will essentially when our, our user loads in user login gets called in the adventure script it sends uh, an event to the auto save script which sends an event out uh, to onload uh, and that's still not doing anything but every 10 seconds that auto save script will call an on save function or on save event and that's hooked up to this function here so every 10 seconds this function gets called and it saves the progress of our character so let's now go ahead and handle the onload part of this so we need to get hold of the data local uh, save data equals um, self get save data remember we're now using the non-deprecated version so it's synchronous so the next line i can expect save data to have something if it has anything and for now just to test that this is working, I'm going to print out what version we are we currently have in our save data. Save data dot version. There we go. So let's have a look at what happens when I load the game. So version is nil because that save data has never been called. So there is no save data. As soon as this has happened inventory saving we know that that auto save feature um, is calling our saving in the background every 10 seconds so we know that our um, our attributes are probably being saved as well now it would be it would have been a good idea to actually uh, also put in a print statement here to say the same as the inventory one really print attributes attributes saving now save that and let's run it again and now we can see that version has come up as two which is correct this is version two i um, i'll show you in a second and we have auto save all loaded and now whenever this inventory saving is occurring attribute saving is also occurring so um, let's put it to the test shall we i'm going to go and interact with this alter and increase my magic so my, get my player five magic and let's get my player 
three strength. Wait for it to save. So we can see that it's saved. It's done that 10 second schedule thing. And now let's get out of the game. Uh, I'll quickly show you where that version number is that you might want to increase if you ever change the way your data is being saved or the model that you're saving. And let's go back in the game and let's go and interact with this and see if we're starting from one or see if we're starting from five. The last thing that we need to do to make sure that this is all working appropriately, remember we just printed out what version we had loaded in. The other thing we need to do is when we've loaded this data in is go and put it back in our character attributes. So let's go and do that. Now I'm going to get hold of the attributes in a slightly different way this time. I'm going to copy that line, but I'm not going to use the properties. I'm just going to use the attributes script like this. And I'm going to do attributes.properties.magic equals save data.magic. And let's just copy that and paste it a few times and change these. So we've got strength there and element there. So we're getting our data, we're getting hold of the character attribute script, and then we're repopulating our properties in that script. Before I go any further, one other thing I need to do is test that my version of save data is equal to my current version in here. And so let's just look at how we do that in our inventory save script. So if you ever get stuck doing this kind of thing, then it's worth having a blank, a, uh, a copy of the adventure template open or the adventure blueprint open so that you can go and have a look and see how it's working there. If we see here, we've, we've wrapped it, uh, wrapped the onload in this uh, version check here. So we can do the same thing. Save data dot version if it's equal to, and we need to see if it's equal to the save version that's getting passed in here. Then repopulate our attributes. End. It is also quite a good idea to just guard yourself rather than just ending that if statement. Let's put in here what version we're rocking. So this is attributes version save data version and in this else this else will occur if save data dot version either didn't exist so we should probably guard against that save data either if save data doesn't exist or the version is different we should print out here couldn't load tributes data version incorrect. Okay, so let's test that. So we didn't get our, our guard warning there. Let's go and interact with our anvil. Put our uh, strength at five. Let's get our magic up to seven. Close that. Let's go back in. Did I leave it to save? No. Okay, just wait for it to save the seven magic. Okay, and so I'm expecting magic now to start from eight, which it does. I'm expecting the anvil, the strength to start from five, six, uh, which it does. Okay, so that's all working. So now I have player attributes, which are saving using the new get save data method, well, set save data method. They're using the get save data method to uh, pull in that data. And that is essentially how to save and load player progress. It's a slightly different way to the way we did it before with the checkpoints. We're now using, we're leveraging the auto save script, which is a part of the adventure, temp, uh, adventure blueprint. Uh, I look forward to seeing your adventure games and some saving and loading progress. And I look forward to seeing you in Crater.